I'm not wasting no time. You guys are because new here. My name is Ashley, and this is my sweet perspective, where I give my take on all things TV and movie related. And I'm here to put you on. And I'm back today to talk about Mary and George, episode two, The Hunt. Now I'm not on camera today, y'all. My little guest is here uh, in my stead, but I will be back on camera next week, honey. I just listen. I didn't feel like doing the setup, but I had to get this review out to you guys. Okay. Um, so let's jump right into it again. Mary and George episode two, the hunt, honey, it's 1615. That's the year. And Mary is going to a brothel. Okay. And I'm like, Miss Mary, what are we doing in the brothel, sis? Like, what are we doing there? And not only that, but honey, one of the workers has just taken a liking to her and is like, I see you. <laughs> I see you, sis. Like, I, I will not sis, but I see you, baby girl. <laughs> Is this something you want to try? And she's basically like, um, why would I want something that anybody can pay for? And I'm like, well, Mary, well, Mary, turns out she's Bacon. meeting we there. So him last Bacon. episode, we know he was in the King's council, right? Um, and they were plotting together to get George into the King's chamber, honey, so that we could, um, display Somerset, honey, cause we over Somerset. Um, but anyway, so he's there with the King's man. Um, and basically they're like, uh, there's going to be a hunt. Okay. And so I'm going to give you the details to the open road. If George is there and makes his present known, that'll be a great way to get in front of the King. Okay. Um, and the hooker was trying to pick up Mary that didn't work, but she does give a warning. And I thought the warning was interesting. And she was basically like, stay away from the prince, avoid the prince. And I'm like, okay. So now we get to the races, the open road. Mary has briefed George, honey, and he is there in his Sunday's best. But when I tell you this old man was aggressively trying to get with George, like, baby, I have pity on you. <laughs> baby, I'll do this for you. You know, he said, are you a pitcher? Are you a catcher? I was like, all right now, sir, you're all leave that, leave him alone. He was like, you know, well, you're trying to get with the king. I can give you whatever. He's like, you are not a king. What do you even do? George checked him real quick. Like, who are you, bro? Um, <laughs> it was just so gross. But we do find out some key information. And that was that Somerset got the king's attention with a broken leg at a joust session. The king took pity on him. And so I knew immediately that George was going to eat that up because not only is George fine, okay, um, but he is also very smart. And so the king comes, the carriage comes, George tries to be seen, honey, falls all out in the mud. The old man laughs at him and he's like, this is ridiculous. So he goes home and he's like, mother, whoever gave you this advice hates you. That's not your friend. <laughs> and so in this time we find out that his brother, John, the eldest isn't well, right? Um, and the mother's like, you know, George, go hunting with me. And so he's like, fine. So they go out there and they see this uh, unalive dog, right? Uh, and she's like, you know, John did it. Um, but we can't let anybody think that he's slipping mentally because clearly John is a little bit deranged. Okay. Some, something's going on with him. He said the dog was yapping too loud. And so I guess he strangled it, right? He's got the injuries. Now it turns out that one of their maidens in the house, one of the maids, um, that was her dog and she loved the dog like her child, like very close. And so, um, she's like, Mary's like, George, just act like you did it because you know, the firstborn, we still got to try to get him married off. And George is like, you're going to try to get him off. He was like, yeah, there's a man, um, Lord Hatton, I believe who, um, is looking for a delicate and <laughs> a delicate and sensitive husband for his young girl and George is like John delicate he just killed a dog with his bare hands and she's like yes delicate so they get back home and George is like Miss Ash Kettle that's the name of the maid who owns the dog I'm so sorry I'm so sorry um it was me I thought it was the animal we were going after and she was like don't piss on my back and tell me it's rainy I said whoa she said don't piss on my back and tell me it's rainy when I say Miss Ash Kettle's not playing with them she ain't playing with them. She ain't playing with them. So now we know that there's a potential betrothal in place between John uh, and Lady Hatton's daughter. Now the Hattons come to dinner. Guess who's coming to dinner? Baby, when I tell you it got suspect, and I knew it got suspect when she said, 
what Queen Elizabeth had some magic hymen savior like girl I knew that's when Lady Hatton was going to be an utter problem but you know she's sitting there biding her time doing as the rich do and finally she's like Mary I don't even know why you brought me here you know your son is nowhere good enough for my daughter and when I tell you she reads all of them down filth at that table I haven't seen a read like that I, I, I don't think I've ever seen a read like that I don't she basically called Mary a streetwalker under any certain terms and basically said, and you're not even really a lady quite as is kept you have no lineage boo boo and said basically the man of the house um you don't even know who you're laying in bed with I was like well dang and she was like come on girl she got her child got her stuff and got up the husband honey was just apologizing and leaving because don't get it twisted she demeaned him too so apparently lady hatton has money from her previous marriage she just got marriage basically just kind of as a cover but she didn't need his money he doesn't have much money um and so she's still living on her inheritance from her previous marriage but yeah honey she was like cut the crap so they all leave the room you know george is mad mary's mad everybody's mad um and john confesses to miss ash kettle you know i i did it um i i i killed your dog but your dog was so loud i couldn't stop and miss ash kettle said i know all of us do bad things sometimes and i was like oh lord what in the world does that mean now something i thought was interesting is that um, when they were sitting at the table and she was reading everybody the riot act lady Hatton she says to George and you have gallows eyes and next thing we know um, they find a way to ultimately get George into the king's sight and so to uh, marry about the the queen and the queen kind of still has some clout and has some power right and if she wants something done she can make it happen uh, and so uh, he hates Somerset. She kind of hates all men, but George is more delicate, like him more. And so they decide that they are going to let him be one of the dancers um, at the next, you know, court or whatever. And so he gets to dance. He locks eyes with the king. Somerset is immediately jealous and the king invites George on the hunt, right? And so before that, um, they make they make a way for George to see the king privately. They make this excuse that the king's son is sickly. And while there, the queen kind of pushes George in front of him, gets the son, and they actually knight George. So now George is Sir George, um, and he gets to go on this hunt. Now, the king warns him, all right, you can go on this hunt, but the last servant boy, and a couple people warn George, the last servant boy that the king, you know, had a, a ten, intentions on was mysteriously taken out or maybe not so mysteriously taken out but they're saying there can be a lot of injuries on the hunt so watch your back but we do see George and the king cozying up to each other so of course on the hunt it's dramatic Somerset tries to throw him off the horse George falls off but then I actually think he beats himself up even more the king finds him finds pity on him um gets him seen by the doctor and then later honey he was in the king's bedchamber and the threats persist but I don't know he's so in the the king's good graces now I think George will be safe as long as he stays there in Curry's favor with the king Somerset is going to end up ruining his self mark my words honey while all this has been going on I've done looked up everything on Mary they didn't found out her background they didn't beat up her confidant who knew all her secrets honey about her being a servant girl all that stuff and basically he was like blackmailing her like okay thank you so much for your service but now I don't need you you need to scurry somewhere else you're a perfidious harlot is what he calls her mind you Mary and the harlot at the brothel then got busy she said bodies are bodies are bodies but honey Mary was Mary had an experience Mary had a whole experience she was she was I can't say getting her back blown out but a lot honey tell me why they poison him they poison him and his completely but his man he's still living honey so he takes the letter to some man we haven't even seen before I don't think we've seen him yet so it's going to be heck to pay this next episode I'm wondering what's going to happen because honey the henchman lived and all her tea 
is in that letter. So anyway, guys, that's it on Mary and George episode two. Drop it in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Was it better or worse than the first? Hmm. If you still haven't, what are you doing? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.